Welcome back to the program and we definitely appreciate your valid company. Time for us to look into matters of diet and nutrition after the holiday season. Um, people have eaten quite a lot, but now we want to look at what are some of those better healthy tips? What does it even mean when you say you're dieting and what is proper nutrition? That is what Jessica Wanjiku, who is a nutritionist, will be helping us understand in like the next 30 minutes or so. Oh. Welcome to the program, Jessica. Thank you so much, Doreen. Where do you even start from? <laughs> because there's quite a lot to discuss when it, when it comes to dieting and nutrition. We yeah. just say that the whole day season is over. What mm -hmm. we cooler on People the shiver. have overfed. <laughs> yeah, we're well fed. You know, some yeah. are thinking of uh, perhaps either g going to the gym, some mm -hmm. are thinking of adding weight, and all this boils around the kinds of foods that you eat as a person. That's right. Perhaps you can begin from, uh, when you talk about nutrition, what basically comprises of a proper nutrition? All right. Uh, thank you. For a proper nutritional diet is yeah. one that is uh, balanced, yeah? Mm -hmm. Has proper carbohydrates, uh, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Mm -hmm. But I would say for this season, we should try and concentrate more on carbohydrates that will release the energy slowly. Mm -hmm. The kind that we call gl low glycemic. Now, the because we have eaten a lot of chapati, rice, pilaus, and all, let's now focus on the ones that give you sugar slowly, like ndoma. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, um, arrow roots, sweet yeah. potatoes, cassava yams. Arrow roots is the ndoma. Yes, it's the ndoma, <laughs> and um, uh, and even if you're gonna have the rice and chapati, mm -hmm. can I have them? very small quantities or very much spaced out like you're eating it chapati today you eat maybe after two or three days mm -hmm. if possible uh, people ask me how do you avoid rice chapati and they're like what you do is uh, you make a stew that is heavier so if you're using potatoes for your stew you make that stew a bit okay heavy i mean like you use more ingredients more vegetables when you say potatoes these are the uh, irish potatoes yes the irish waru, potatoes basically. yes waroos okay. if you're using irish potatoes or waroos to make your stew use a lot more veggies if you are maybe doing a plant-based stew you're using um uh, madodo uh, beans mm -hmm. so use um, put your gorgets carrots tomatoes and all that that that's stew is a little bit heavier and you can do more of the stew than the rice. Mm -hmm. right? So a biggest portion of the plant-based stew, a very small portion of the rice and probably some vegetables, a fruit like an avocado, that way. And then when you're starting eating on your plate, start with the plant-based stew, uh, then like move around to the vegetables, then the rice. By the time you're reaching the rice or the chapati or whatever starch you're having, you are almost full. Mm -hmm. So that's the hack. You're not really eliminating it, but you're reducing the portions. So you start, okay, you've served this specific foods in mm -hmm. your plate, mm -hmm. in portions definitely, and you'll, you'll tell us about the portions momentarily, yeah. but then you're saying start with eating that protein base, yes. then move to starch. Yes. How is that even practical? Uh, okay, it's something no, that you have to train like rice, your mind. Yeah? You know, rice, you just pick the rice and then the stew. Or if mm, it's ugali, you're picking, you know? That's how we are used to doing it. So you have to like reverse, mm -hmm. reverse engineer your brain. So that now you're trying to start with the stew or the whatever proteins that you're having. Then you go to the veggies, then you you go to the to the starch or mm -hmm. the carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So we say that we are start, we're serving, like if you're having, you know how we say that I'm nakula chapati and madodo. Yeah. So you say now madodo and chapati. You get? So you start, you yes, actually you start, start with, with saying it yes. first. You start with the beans, then you go to, if there are veggies, then you go to the starch. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's a mind trick that uh -huh. you train your mind to do that. Reverse engineer it. Well, yeah. that, that will quite take a lot <laughs> before we actually do it, <laughs> given given how we've also been cultured, you yes, know, yes. even just as Africans, yeah. for instance. But mm -hmm. there's something that you also mentioned, and mm -hmm. perhaps I'd want you to elucidate a bit on that one, when you talked about even the foods that we should, we should be looking into mm -hmm. in this new season, mm -hmm. yeah, and you touched on minerals. Yeah. So which, uh, which foods exactly are this that mm -hmm. you're looking at? Minerals mainly you get them from vegetables. All right. Uh, of course, we start with the green leafy vegetables. It's what's commonly available in the Kenyan market. Like you will always find spinach, skuma, 
Nowadays, managu terere are also available. Mm -hmm. So those green, be, uh, green leafy vegetables are very rich in minerals. Mo all of them, not most of them, all of them. But we also have the kind of white or colored ones, mm -hmm. like the cabbage, the cauliflower, the broccoli, uh, and the like. They also have, they are packed with lots of minerals. Yeah. So those are the ones that are readily available. Then now we go to these things we call superfoods. Okay, mm -hmm. I find the name being, at any superfoods are things like moringa leaf powder, baobab powder, baobab is mabuyu. Um, then you have what neem. Okay, those leaves that were traditionally available that we kind of left, but now we are pushing back to the people to Slowly. know that they are there. They are yeah. stinging nettle, mm -hmm. things like those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How available are this? Because just even from the name that you describe them mm. to be, you know, superfoods. Mm -hmm. Someone would imagine this a is in a particular. Uh, it's superfood. It was popularized from the West. Okay. But uh, these are foods that are readily available. Thinking nettle is dafai. Mm -hmm. uh, baobab is mabuyu. We eat mabuyu almost on the streets when you find them. Yeah. Uh, what just was the other thing snack. that I mentioned? They are available. It's only that people have forgotten about them. Because, mm -hmm. like, right when I was growing up, at some times, when it used to rain, my mom would harvest the, um, what is it called, uh, blackjack, mushere. Mm. Uh, those leaves are edible. We would also eat, um, the, the, when it rains, it would, a lot of managu would spring up. African nightshade, they would spring up and so we would go harvest before before the land is ploughed. So it's just that they have been depopularized and also the kind of, because of use of a lot of pesticides, sorry, in the farm, yeah. in the farming systems, those weeds were killed because of the things we sprayed our farms. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we do, uh, when, like when I was coming to my 20s, they were not as available. But now because we are going back to organic farming and all this, they are kind of coming back to the market. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, even if you check at Naivas, you'll find the Managu, Terere, Saga, mm -hmm. uh, Kanzira, you'll find them. I can't say they're organically grown or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they are available, so yeah. yeah, yeah. When you talked about organically grown, it just reminds me, like, you know, those vegetables that, that you're talking about, mm. like the kanzira, managu, terere. Mm. I was telling someone that these days you actually cook them and you don't even have to boil them as it were. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. fry. You know, Kitambo, you would boil them yes. and let them boil because but you couldn't quite eat it. They were tough. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Also, that also goes to show there's something that have changed. Yeah. Like we are no longer... In our production process? Yes, yes. Okay. Like the fact that you don't have to... Because Boil, boiling was loosening up the roughage mm -hmm. in the vegetables. Mm -hmm. The fact that now you can just put them in your kitungu, nyanya, and you, you fry them and they're okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are some that you still can't do that, like uh, kunde. Kunde is still very tough. Mm -hmm. So I think the... Because um, these are also vegetables that you would find even when it was getting like dry. They were kind of drought resistant. Mm -hmm. The kunde um, and those ones. So I think... Uh, a lot of ha has changed in our farming systems, but there are some that are still zimeshika. The kunde still, you have to boil it a little bit. Some of the vegetables that are found in the Western region also mm. have to boil them a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I, true, actually, it is, it is. Mm. But then you talked about some of this you know, uh, f crops being a drought resistance. And mm -hmm. this just orients my mind to think about even what you're reeling with, reeling with as a country currently, mm -hmm. issues of drought still mm -hmm. quite on the rise. So from your perspective, even just as a nutritionist, someone who's really a lot into these aspects of food and healthy eating, mm -hmm. what would you give as a recommendation that we need to do as a country to perhaps revert back some of these um, drought resistance mm -hmm. crops so that then we can be sustainable mm -hmm. even as a country? What would you say? I think we should, uh, and uh, the, the trend is already there. Okay. I, I, um, I think the last time we were talking about organic farming and everything, mm -hmm. and I can say the, the community is growing. One of the food that is coming back is cassava and yams. Yeah. Those are quite drought resistant crops. Sweet potatoes too, it looks like they're yes. coming back. Yeah, they are coming back, although they still have a lot of, they are still affected a lot by some pesticides. Mm -hmm. And if they are sprayed, you find that still, uh, the tuber doesn't look so good. But cassava and yams, they are rarely attacked by pests. Mm. So unfortunately, actually I was talking about this recently on our YouTube channel. Yeah. People associated those drought-resistant foods with poverty. Mm. 
because they were the ones that were available when it, we were having drought, like cassava and yams. But we also need to reverse that mindset mm -hmm. so that people can start um, buying them because we can grow them as organic farmers, but if you don't buy them, it doesn't make sense. What's yeah? the point? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So we need to people to revert their thinking or their thought process mm -hmm. such that they accept these drought-resistant crops as actually our staple food. Mm -hmm. like cassava yams, uh, sweet potatoes, arrow roots. Um, yeah, they need, we need to change our perspective first of all so that we can buy them. Mm -hmm. And then when we have started buying them, we can even stipulate what kind of quality we want. Yeah, as the, now as the consumers. Actually, consumers, we have a lot of power. Mm -hmm. We can stipulate that we don't want this one because it's um, quite, uh, it has a lot of uh, pesticide residue. So kind of try to reduce, that. like how the international community does with our products. Mm -hmm. Why are they brought back? Because they test them and they say the residues, uh, the pesticide residue on this crop is too high. But as a country, how much power do we have to do that? We might not necessarily have it, but I'm saying as the consumer, All consumer right. rights, we mm -hmm. have the rights to demand the right quality of products. It's you. only that we haven't jailed enough mm -hmm. to accept these products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, think of something like tomatoes. Tomatoes uh, and apples, there's a time when they were being sprayed to turn red, then sprayed to turn green. Mm -hmm. And people just raised the issue and somehow it is subsided, like people are no longer doing that. Mm -hmm. The same for, was it potatoes, for them to grow very fast. Um, I know because I come from Nyandara, people would spray, like this is the portion of land for commercial production, but this is for home consumption and these ones are not sprayed these ones are spread. There's a documentary that was done uh, of, about potato farming in Yandara and the farmers, because they are not hiding, mm -hmm. they will say because the demand in Nairobi and Kiambu and all these uh, this bedroom counties around Nairobi, because the demand for potatoes is too high, we have to spray these ones to grow faster. We shape them to Nairobi, but ours, we can take two or three months for them to mature. And, so such and they can wait for that? Yes, they can wait for that. So such trends need to change. We need to, as consumers, we need to demand that our growers or our farmers give us the right quanti quality of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that just reminds me like of the GMO debate to a point that even the courts halted it much as yes, the government has said that they are going to make importation of mm -hmm. some of these products, you know, like the uh, maize, rice and sugar mm -hmm. to sustain us from uh, around the man months of March, but at least by the time they were settling into it, mm. you know, Kenyans had really explored mm. that issue so much so because, well, consumers were so El so those, those, that, those, that, those that were complaining were complaining, those mm. that were for, and we are just trying to be able to converse yeah. around, around that issue. Mm. All right, I so hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we had the same momentum yeah. ar around even other foods, not okay. just the main staples, yeah. it would really push products out of the market that are not they're not standard, they're mm -hmm. substandard and they're not good for human consumption. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. So then now when you talk about dieting, I mean, you will hear a lot of these statements, mm. especially this particular month. Mm. I'm dieting, I'm only <laughs> taking water, yeah. I'm taking lemon water. Yeah. What is this, first of all, mm. and is it necessary? Uh -huh. Interestingly, that name dieting just came up in my household this morning. Uh -huh. And uh, this is the connotation associated with dieting. Mm -hmm. When I'm eating healthy, someone will come in us, hey, when you are dieting. Mm -hmm. When they say just see vegetables yes, in your plate. Eh? Yes, say we are in a restaurant with a group of friends and I choose to do a vegetarian diet mm -hmm. as, as opposed to going for meat. Yeah. And someone will be like, hey, Jessica, when you are dieting. Mm -hmm. So it's been associated, like healthy eating has been associated with dieting and uh, it doesn't have a very good connotation mm -hmm. even among us as peers. Um, and, and, and because someone will ask you with a little bit of, uh, there's an undertone to eat, yeah? When you are dieting, why are you dieting? Mm -hmm. But I'm eating healthy, I'm not dieting necessarily, mm -hmm. yeah? Because dieting is going back to some Thing that is you know for your body it's healthy like uh, taking veggies drinking water yeah. um, probably going for like a longer period without eating if you have overfed during there 
the festive season, like giving your body a detox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these terms have been associated. They have an undertone to them, but we need to use them correctly. Like if I'm eating my vegetables, no, I'm not dieting. I'm on a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. If I'm eating, you can be on a meat diet. Yes, there are people. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. There are people okay. who there's a carnivore diet. There are people who eat exclusively meat. And they're doing okay. The people who take fat, and fat has been shown to even reverse obesity at some point. If you're, if so you're, consuming, you that. If you're consuming the right kind of fat, yes. I think there's a time I discussed um, high, high, what is it called? High density uh, lipoproteins, like the ones that, the fat that will move fast through your blood system, and there's low density, the ones that clog your arteries. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating the right kind of fat, it, it's okay. Actually, people lose weight that way. Let me tell you how. Yeah, because I was about to ask you, I mean, do you even have healthy fats? <laughs> they are healthy the fats. The, the, the plant, the seed-based oils, the um, canola oil, the olive oil, yeah. those are good oils. But again, if you tell someone I'm taking, I'm on a fat-based diet, mm. they won't understand unless you explain mm. that I'm eating this kind of foods that are, yes, high in fat mm. or cholesterol, but it's the good kind of cholesterol because mm -hmm. there are two types. Mm -hmm. High density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins. Mm. High density, um, they move fast through your blood system, so they don't necessarily clog the arteries. Whereas the low density ones move slowly through your uh, blood system, blood, like they flow slowly, and they at times they, are, they tend to to stick to the walls of the arteries and veins. So uh, how does someone consume oil and lose weight? Mm. Oil takes a lot of energy to break down in the body. Because it's actually like carbohydrates take, I think, four kilocalories to break down one gram of uh, carbohydrate, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Then proteins take seven kilocalories. That's the energy required to break down a gram of proteins. But for fat, it's 23 kilocalories. Mm. So you can, if someone who is consuming a lot of the good oils or fat, the, the body requires more energy to break that down. Mm -hmm. Where does this energy come from? It's the stored energy in your body. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, carbohydrates are stored as fat. So if you are, they'll be broken down to break whatever you have consumed, and then somehow you lose weight. It's a lot of science into it, but it works. But then how do you know um, this is the high density, this is, this is the low density, um, and mm. actually this is not good for me, this mm. is not, because just as you said, mm. anytime you talk about fat and mm. you put losing weight in it, they just, it doesn't, it doesn't sink. Make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, just what I say, things like olive oil, canola oil, sunflower oil. These are the high? They are the high, the high density. density. So this is the best, eh? These are the good ones. Okay. And I've talked about it. If the, f the oil is packed in a, in a clear bottle, where you can actually see the oil, because mm -hmm. there's that debate. Someone you tell me, let me not make, mention brands, but yeah. the, the kind of oils in yellow bottles, mm -hmm. Even people will tell you when I put it in a cold in place. November last year about some of these brands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put it in a cold place, it is solidifies. Mm -hmm. Oil should not solidify. Okay. What solidifies is fat, uh, animal-based fat. Like even if you get oil from a cow or sheep and you just slaughter it and you put it outside at room temperature, it is solidifies. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's fat. Sorry, that's fat mm -hmm. from animals solidifies, and that is what we grew up consuming. Uh, we had different brands because even my mom would buy the 10 kg block mm. and we would consume it maybe for three months or more. Mm. But right now we are using oils and the manufacturers know that we are moving towards oil so they will write zero cholesterol, all these things on the, on the packaging. Mm. But if you can't see your oil, just think again about it. And why do you, when you put it, even at room temperature mm -hmm. sometimes, it is solidifies, depending on where you live, like in our uh, residential area, because it's cold, if I put that oil in the, that I can't see, uh, in the yellow kibuyus, it might solidify, or even if it doesn't, if, when you're pouring it out, it's coming out in some chunks. Mm. But if I put canola or if I put sunflower oil, it can stay there for months mm -hmm. without solidifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the biggest thing you need to be looking into if you're 
talking about fats in that regard mm. is uh, just from face value, mm. those in colorless bottles, yeah. Yeah. and actually if it can solidify or not when mm. put at room temperature. Yeah. That should make you better informed to know mm. if this is legit oil yeah. as they say it is, mm. or it's just some fat trying to be put as oil. At, as, yeah, to be sold as oil. Also, people, consumers need to be enlightened because okay. even if when you check the labels of these oils or products, you will see, because now they are required by law to indicate, some, mm. some, some of the brands are required to indicate exactly where was the source of this mm -hmm. uh, oil or fat, as you claim. And so Kebs if, requires them to... Yeah, the, lab, the labeling, branding, it's, it's these, all these things are listed in Kebs, because Kebs is a bureau of standards. Mm -hmm. They have all these requirements, only that there are so many loopholes where manufacturers use and still the products end up in the market. Okay, I yeah. hear you. Yeah. So then also I'd want us to talk about intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a term that you will hear a lot yeah. <laughs> in this season. I'm doing intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And what is this, Jessica? Intermittent fasting basically is going for a long, long period of time without eating something. Long period is between what to what? It is starts from 18 hours. Yeah, it starts from 18 hours. Mm -hmm. You can start from 12 hours where you eat, 12 hours where you fast. Mm -hmm. So that means if you, your last meal is at 4 p.m. in the evening, you can only eat at 4 a.m. in the morning. So the good thing with finishing your meals early mm -hmm. is you go for a longer period. Mm -hmm. Like you can al almost push it to 16 hours, sometimes even 20 hours, mm -hmm. if you finish your last meal in the late afternoon. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of intermittent fasting is going for a long period of time of, or your, of your day without eating. Mm -hmm. Then you eat your meals within a very specific period of time. Mm -hmm. So it is starts from, you eat your meals within 12 hours, then you progress and eat your meals within eight hours. You progress and eat your meals within six hours, within four hours. Uh, and now you can see you're almost fasting for a whole day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is basically eating with breaks in, in between? Um, not with breaks. Okay, let's say at a 24-hour day. Okay. I wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. I only take water and maybe just water, maybe infused water, maybe lemon water, water with ba baobab or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't take breakfast, I don't take lunch. The next meal I will eat at 4 a.m., uh, 4 p.m. So those are 10 hours within which I've not eaten, right? I'm not wrong, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, for, for those 10 hours, I've not eaten any food. I've only been taking water. Mm -hmm. Then, from this... So four, all through this entire time, from the first time you took water, you have just been taking water all yes, yes. till 4 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Then at 4 p.m. now I can eat something. I can take uji, eat some eggs, eat even a full meal. And then maybe uh, I stop at 10, 10 in the night. So my last meal might be at 10 in the night. Mm. Then from there again, I fast mm -hmm. and I eat in the morning. So there's a schedule that you follow. There's mm -hmm. times when you're supposed to eat, fast, 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 then eat like that. Mm -hmm. There's a cast schedule, mm -hmm. which is available on Facebook or whatever. You can always find it. Yeah, they can always find it. Is this it. healthy? Yeah, it's very healthy. It's very healthy because you're giving your body a time to break down whatever you have consumed. Mm -hmm. And if whatever you've consumed is all broken down, it can start now breaking down whatever was stored during when you are fa uh, feasting. Mm, okay. Yes, during the periods <laughs> when you are feasting. Yeah, so that's the whole idea with intermittent fasting. Initially, it was used to help people reverse diseases. It still is mm. used to help people reverse diseases. Diseases like diabetes, uh, hypertension, even obesity. Mm -hmm. So that's what popularized IF, intermittent oh, okay. fasting. Intermittent yeah. fasting. Yeah. And so anyone also who has that goal, resolution to perhaps lose weight, mm. this could be a good um, kind of program. Yes, yes. Yes, it's you a know. good program. Mm -hmm. so we share it on our socials. Yeah. If they check Malkia Nutrition, they would find all this information about IF, mm. uh, the schedules, because there's a schedule and there's a way you progress. You start fasting for 12 hours, 10 hours. Uh, sorry, you start fast. Yes, you start fasting for 12 hours, mm -hmm. 16, 20, 24. Yeah, as you progress. Like that. Yeah. Okay, mm. quite interesting. <laughs> so then the aspect of missing breakfast, mm -hmm. you would also l quite listen to... I don't take breakfast, mm -hmm. like I, mm -hmm. I don't, <laughs> yeah. until around 10 or 11 there about. Uh -huh. Is this healthy eating? Is it proper? It's okay. It depends with your goal or your kind of lifestyle. 
because uh, everyone, you, you remember, um, when I talk about what we do as Malkia, I always talk about personalized, mm -hmm. individualized. It goes to you as a part. It applies to you as a person. Yeah. The good thing again, it's it's what you if you skip breakfast, you're doing a type of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. In a way, yes, because you have slept. Uh, through the night, say even eight hours, let's just use eight hours, then uh, you take your first meal at 10, so that's another four hours from six to 10, uh, four hours, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you've given your body um, 12 hours to, to, cause, to like metabolize whatever food was in the system. Mm -hmm. And if the food in the system was all consumed, it uses the, the stored body, uh, the stored, um, the stores, the fats, and whatever else is stored in your body. So it's okay mm -hmm. if you're healthy or if your intention is to, li to reverse any of these lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's nothing really quite wrong with that as long it's as not. it's personalized. It's not. The, the thing why uh, people have contention about breakfast mm -hmm. is because, again, from the Western part of the world, uh, people say breakfast is the most important, yeah. but what is their lifestyle? They say actually it is the most important meal. Yes, but what is their life, lifestyle? Yeah. They are going to to some place where they're doing hard labor or being being very active. Some of them take breakfast before they go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a more active lifestyle mm -hmm. than we do. Mm -hmm. And even for us Africans, uh, not as sedentary ones, mm -hmm. like someone who is being quite involved in like their day is quite involving physically it's good for them to have a heavy breakfast because mm -hmm. their body needs that energy to push them up to lunchtime conveniently mm -hmm. so it, it depends with the kind of lifestyle you're eating what are your health goals are you reversing any lifestyle disease if you're not um if you're not aiming to reverse any lifestyle disease, take your breakfast. If you're not having any health goal, take your breakfast, have your snacks. It depends with what kind of life you are living. Um, actually, <laughs> recently I was kind of bashed on my YouTube and Facebook, I mean, status, WhatsApp yeah, status, because yeah. I was sharing a lot about um, the kind of food I was eating. Mm -hmm. But at that time, Which I was food pregnant. Was this? I would bake, I would okay. eat uh, what people ask, why are you eating too much sugar, why are you mm. eating too much fat? Mm. But I was pregnant. I, was, I had to build up my body uh, to prepare for that journey. So it depends on what stage of life you are in. Mm -hmm. And I kept pe telling people, uh, even on our YouTube channel, that everyone, everyone's need is personal. Yeah. Someone yeah. might be aiming to gain weight. Yes. So on my channel, I will share. Just wanting to lose weight. Yes, all the I will time. share how to bake a cake because if you are aiming to gain weight and you love cakes, why not? <laughs> so that's why even you said for breakfast, actually it's personalized. It's on an personalized. Individual level. It's all personalized. I hear you. Now, now that you talked about I'm um, pregnant and we are here discussing about diet and nutrition. Yeah. Which one is best for pregnant um, women? Uh, for pregnant women, it has to be high on everything. So high on Every carbohydrates. Category. Yes, high on carbohydrates, high on proteins, high on min minerals and, and vitamins. That's actually why we give in supplements. Because yeah. even like right now, I am on calcium supplements because mm -hmm. I feel that my body needs more calcium. Mm -hmm. Uh, calcium, most of the minerals are usually drained a lot from the mother's body mm. as the, the fetus grows. Mm. So your body needs a lot of calcium, a lot of iron, a lot of uh, potassium and all these things. So you're given supplement, that's why you're given supplementation. Mm. Uh, because a supplement, it adds on to what you are already consuming. So the reason why supplementation or IFAS is given to all women is because they can't, there's no distinction really in terms, we can't really tell what kind of diet are you, are you on as a pregnant woman as opposed to what I am on. Some might be uh, taking enough, some might not be taking enough. Mm -hmm. So there's just a standard that every pregnant woman can be given mm -hmm. to supplement on their minerals and, uh, and, uh, minerals and vitamins, yeah? And then uh, now, in addition to that, as a pregnant woman, you just have to consume a high calorie diet, a high protein diet. Mm -hmm. protein, Mostly. Yes, because protein, your body needs to make another body. Okay. <laughs> and proteins are the bodybuilding ones. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of energy from the carbohydrates because, again, your body is 
breaking down a lot of things and trying to reconstruct a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So you have to be high calorie, high protein with a lot of supplementation. I hear you. Yeah. And finally, as we cap this one, Jessica, talk mm -hmm. to me about a proper plate. Lastly, what is for, a proper plate? Who? Yeah, <laughs> a proper plate, just general. Uh, just for someone who is healthy. Yes. Of oh, someone who's thinking of, I want to embark on healthy eating. Oh, right, right, right. Now a you have a diet. It has to be reversed. So, um, for someone who wants to just start a healthy kind of lifestyle, fifty percent vegetables. Mm -hmm. Whether they are green or they are colored, 50% mm -hmm. of your plate. Colored is cabbage and... Carrots, yes. yeah. tomatoes, yes. Ca ca whatever, yes. gorgets and everything. Mm -hmm. All these are veggies, yeah? And then now 25% is protein, mm -hmm. preferably plant protein. So all these uh, beans, lentils, things, all those things. And uh, the rest is that the remaining 25% is carbohydrate again we talked about the low glycemic ones <laughs> so if someone can have a brown chapati as opposed to a white chapati, chapati if we can, yeah if we can have uh, maybe whatever some uh, baked sweet potatoes or whatever mm -hmm. i did a video recently on fried sweet potatoes yeah. they were delicious where can they find this video <laughs> On our YouTube channel uh -huh. at Malkia Nutrition, okay. it's actually one of the trending videos on our channel, not right. on YouTube in general. So they check out Malkia U Nutrition on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You'll find that uh, recipe for sweet potatoes. Someone has shared a recipe for um, arrowroot fries. Oh. I will try it out very soon and record <laughs> it. These things are delicious. Okay, yes. so, I hear you. Yeah. But bottom line is 50%, half Veggies. of your plate. Yes, oh, half we did finish. And water, lots of water. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not dieting, it's just good that's water. That's just normal. It I should be for everyone. I hear you. Thank yeah. you so much. Jessica, yeah. for your valid insight. We definitely value that. I appreciate you calling us here. All right, I have been speaking to Jessica Wanjiko, who is a nutritionist. Of course, what has formed center of our conversation is diet and nutrition. Good place to end this conversation. But before we get to cap it up, I'll just like to remind you of also what you're following up. That is the police pass out parade, which is expected to begin at around 1030 thereabout. The moment the president arrives there, we are talking about a total of um, 2,881 recruits, constables, who are set to be graduating today. Of course, this is after that nine-month rigorous um, training process that they underwent at Kiganjo uh, Police Training College. So the moment this begins, we shall definitely be crossing over there to just bring you bits and pieces of how the event will be unfolding. Thank you so much for keeping us company since 6.30 up until this point. From me and on behalf of the entire team, Santa Sana, till tomorrow. Good morning.